Swinford. So perish all witches in this town. What's this then? Hold your tongue, orders of parliament. No need to rape me, brother. Abraham Eagles, blacksmith. Formerly pikeman in Skippen's regiment. See? Good for you, blacksmith. Mr. John Fletcher put me here as a reward for my services. Can you read? I know me letters. Then read for him. I've got work to do. Let it be known to all that Charles Stuart the Younger has returned to this island and is upon our northern border mustering an army. Oh, please, God, not another war. He would bring the Scots into our country to pillage, rape, and burn everywhere. And with this, you can make some warm clothes for the children before winter, Edith. Oh, and for my man. And me. Oh, thank you, mistress. Thank you kindly. Thank you both, ladies. Lizzie Burdock. Thank you, mistress. And to you, good wife. And Prudence Mags. Good day, mistress. Never one without the other. Now, you were here last week. Now, what is it now? We need shoon for muddy weather, good wife, mistress. It is sad being two widows sharing the same roof. Um, and we need food and coverings, having no providers. You do well enough by begging. Margaret, give them five shillings. Here. And come not again this side of Christmas. God bless you, mistress. And you good man. And you dear babe. My man, even as a child, you were always too easily touched. So John is always saying. Well, how much longer is he going to be in London? Five shillings till you tied. And they expect us to go down on our knees giving thanks. Five shillings is five shillings. To them, in their fine dwelling. They never feel the cold. Full bellies and soft beds, masters and servants alike. Pox on them all. Mistress Jackman, hope you and your dear babe are well. We are. Thanks, B. You two-faced bitch. I heard you call a pox on her and on her servants. Bitch, am I? Shriveled up, stinking old hag, you. Ah, you maggot. You're not worth spittle. And what have you got there? Herbs to poison us. The old village knows what you are. Just you watch out, skinny lady. That's enough. Both of you. Come on, Tia. I've not got all day. Watch out. They'll seem to be running out to the other end of you, instead of your mouth. Witch! Witch! I told her. I told her a thieving bitch. She's known for a thief, she is. Who is? Skinny Lizzie Burdock. She was here begging. Ooh, dough and currants. Yeah, oh. take your dirty hands out of my dough. Mm, sweet and soft it is, soft on me gum. <laughs> I won't have it in my cake. Into the fire with it. Waste not, want not. <laughs> Yeah, oh, get the griddle, Rachel. <laughs> What's that you're doing? Wait and see, said the blind man. <laughs> no, wait, wait. <laughs> She was talking about skinny Lizzie Berta. Aye, may she burn. I like this. <laughs> Mrs. Dunphy, I have a message from Mistress Fletcher. Mr. Gabriel Rudd, the notable preacher, is expected. So there'll be one extra for dinner. Oh, Lord. Get another duck, Rachel, and take that thing with you. You breed sweet ducklings, Mistress Fletcher. The very juice in the bones is nectar. You do me a compliment, Mr. Rudd. 
They're from my pond at Melsham. You must come over to us. I shall, sir. I'm traveling through the Midland Counties and shall stop next at your parish. You find the people in these parts godly, I hope, sir. In the main, thanks to such as you, preacher. But there are sinners to be rooted out, Satan's agents. There are sinners enough here, I'll witness. In the village, Mistress Lamb? In your own house, Mistress Fletcher. Servants with secret, malignant thoughts. A handful of old retainers, Mistress Lamb. Hmm. It is to my family they are loyal. Come, come. This claret is excellent. Have you news from Scotland, sir? Aught of Charles Stuart? Indeed, he must march at us with Scottish troops and has now most shamefully pledged himself to adopt all the neighbours' practices of the Scots religion. Hmm. Sickens me that there must be yet another shedding of blood. A womanly weakness. I condone it. But mark this. It is a punishment. A punishment upon us. We have permitted the shoots of evil to spring up in the furrows of good that we have ploughed. Yea, even that blasphemy which we cleansed bloodily but a few years back. The abomination of witchcraft. It is spreading to our peril. The servants of Satan are the enemies of our people. We must root all such out in this time of peril. Aye, and we must pluck the sinfulness out from our own bosoms. Have ye thought what it means to burn in hell fire? To writhe and scream in the abyss of fire and brimstone? That is the doom in store for all who are denied grace. The witch, I, and the traitor, and the scoffer at the true religion, the mouther of blasphemous oaths, he who plays the whoremonger, and she who plays the whore, be warned. Even the silly girl, and many such there be who burns with thoughtless lust, will burn but in horrible agony forever. Forever and ever, the flame sears. It rends you with such pains as you have never known. Piteous eternal thirst torments you, and your mouth gapes wide, only to swallow fire. But know this, you can be saved. You can find grace and joy in heaven. I tell you that grace can be found by perfect obedience to the will of God. I tell you that I, and such as I, can offer ye the gift of grace. Ye can be saved. Ye can be saved. a message. Come find your tongue. It is late. You weep, child. What is this? Sir, is it true? Can anyone be saved? Saved? Oh, forgive me, sir. I had to come to you. I couldn't go to my bed for thinking of hellfire. Can I truly be saved, sir? This is a strange intrusion and not seemly. But I cannot turn such a one away. <gasps> Weep your sins. I cannot help it, sir. Nay, tears may water the soil of repentance. Whether you can be saved depends upon the nature of your sins. I'm a bad girl, sir. Bad? With men, sir. Not worse. Not worse? Not worse than fornication? I'm fit to burn in hell, sir. Can I be saved? Wipe your face. <laughs> I see that as you cleanse your countenance, you show yourself not uncomely. So might it be with your soul if that were cleansed. Oh, sir. It will be a mighty wrestle to save your soul. Will you strive with me, girl? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Kneel. Pray, have mercy upon me, O God. 
Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness. According to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Oh, amen. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Amen. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. Amen. Lift up your countenance. Know you that the Spirit of God is within me, and that I may confer grace upon a sinful daughter of Eve. Oh, 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 oh. It is by the conjunction of the sinful with the sanctified. <laughs> Mistress Fletcher. Mr. Lamb. You will pardon my interruption when I name to you the distinguished visitor I bring. Pray enter, sir. Allow me to present Mr. Henry Snelling. An honor, Mr. Fletcher. The honor is mine, sir. Mr. Lamb speaks so highly of you. May I offer you some refreshment? Later, thank you, mistress. You've heard of Mr. Snelling, of course. I am ashamed to confess... Mr. Gabriel Rudd has been with you. Indeed, he left us but yesterday. I am his co-adjutor. You will continue the preaching here, sir. Nay, mistress, that is not my duty. Mr. Snelling is an uncoverer of witchcraft. He has given 12 witches over to the Borough Court at Swinford. 16, Mr. Lamb. Four of them hanged already. Praise God. A blessing upon your sanctified work. You are a witch finder, sir. Mr. Rudd purifies by the word. I follow him to purify by the deed. That is your purpose at Anscot. I am here to look about me, mistress, to inquire. I must beg your hospitality for that time and quarters for my man. Of course. Sir, ours is a quiet and peaceful corner. The people are good enough. I hope you find them free of taint. Not so, Mistress Fletcher. It is a reeking dungeon of sin. No habitation of man is free from sin. No hamlet but is stained by backbiting. Quarrelling, carnality, and fear, mistress. Poor things, we must protect them. How will you proceed, sir? I shall, of course, announce your coming in my church. Yes. And you shall conduct a service there, speaking with a voice of thunder. Nay, I pray you, Mr. Lamb, no proclamations. I prefer to go about it gently. Gently? Among the people listening, the people always tell me. You want the news? I have the news. War. War any day, I tell you. Wait here, Emily. Sir. I will be black again. I'm Henry Snelling. You've heard of me. Aye, sir. We have. Why such a harsh? I do not alarm you, I hope. No guilty consciences. You are telling of the wars, blacksmith. Continue. Oh, nay, sir. Not now you are present. Right, tis you we wish to hear. It says peace we all pray for, sir. And peace we shall have. If we beat the devil. If we beat the devil. If you, good folk, and I, Beat the devil. Oh, he is cunning. He enforces all those whom he enters into all kinds of horrible wickedness, bringing upon us the wrath of God. War is the wrath of God! By war! And how his servants strike upon the godly, plaguing them with boils and sores afflicting them with all manner of sickness, making their very livelihoods to vanish. And their poor little children to languish and suffer and die. Witches! Do I speak truth? Why, look at my sores. Big guy weaving in with naught, and your 
good man, Edith. Give him a big hearty fella. Then drop him dead of a sudden. Why, yeah. Chief Witchery! Head Witchery! to live. Exodus 22:18. Yes, I hear you. You suffer. The signs are here. For the love of God, for your lives and for your little ones, find the evil ones out now. How, oh, sir? Tell us how. Why, who is sour, lustful, of an ill nature, spiteful, malicious, peevish, devilish with the tongue, quick to curse, light fingered to see, who harbors a familiar in the shape of bird or beast, whose shadow over your threshold is followed by misfortune. And look first of all among women, for Eve is the sinful creation set down in Eden to tempt man to wrong. There, let you look. Lizzie Burdock! My youngest was starving unto death. And you stole her crust of bread. Because Lizzie cursed me when I wouldn't give her a groat. And look what come on me. The witch! 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 The the Fletchers are but new there. Their servants are all fallacy under the skin, and that means for Stuart. Sir, they are secret malignants! I am told that this village was formerly very much for the Stuarts. We are for ourselves, sir, when to serve or starve. Say me nay, any of you. Tis true enough. Aye, tis true. And tis true you should smell out your witches at the castle. I'll name you one for a start. You have taken Minty? I have not taken her, mistress. She is still lodged here, in a cellar. She was put there by the blacksmith and Mr. Snelling's man, Amos. Without my knowledge and without giving a cause, you have laid hands on one of my people. This cannot be possible, sir. It is in my warrant, mistress. As to the cause, I am here to save you all from witchcraft and at some risk to myself. She is an old retainer, given shelter to end her days at peace in my house, which is now made a prison. Not for long, mistress. I shall have her safe in Swinford Jail. Swinford? To be examined before her appearance at the Borough Court. By what has gone before, that means certain death. I must speak plain with you, Mistress Fletcher. Your attitude to Mr. Snelling smacks of worldly pride. He has taken Minty. Minty? 
Oh, that one. I must remind you, my Good dear... Good Mistress that... Lamb, Minty is of my house. She is my dependent. This man... This can... man? Mr. Snelling, this man. Come, you forget yourself. No, I do not. I fear you do. You forget your duty. Forgive me, but it is my place to remind you of it. I thank you. Thank me not, dear friend. Oh, indeed, I must thank you. For the frequency and the assiduity with which you have ever reminded me of my duty. Mistress Fletcher, do I detect a tone of willfulness? Mistress Lamb, I am not a child to be called willful. In Mr. Fletcher's absence, I am keeper of this house. And am I not yours? My keeper? Spiritually. No. Mr. Lamb holds that place. And to speak as plain as you have, dear friend, I am well able to determine all other matters for myself. No! Is this not worldly pride? Sure. Anne, my dear. Mistress Lamb, I uh, trust you are well. Well enough, Mr. Fletcher. And you, my dear. But you, you tremble. Mistress Fletcher suffers from an amiable softness of heart of which I am sure you will cure her. John, they have taken Minty on suspicion of witchcraft. And Mr. Snelling is here. I know. But this is not a matter for you ladies. I am the justice here. I know when to leave husband and wife alone. I shall have enough to do spreading the good word among the servants. Pray, excuse me. Need of you. Shh. Now, all's well, my dear. No, all's all well. is not well, John. You have come just in time to save us from this madness. What uh, madness do you speak of? This man Snelling's madness. Snelling? I sent him. Sent him? You sent Rudd. Rudd prepares the way for Snelling. Snelling is the man who does our work. Whose work? Well, the Council of State, by which I am employed. The armies to Scotland, and we are left the task of cleansing the nation from danger. And we're doing it. Danger? Minty, a danger? If she be a witch, yes. Witches are the danger. Satan is the danger. You believe Minty is a danger? Well, I'll leave Minty aside. Does any person of sound mind doubt the existence of witches? John. Now, look you to the Christian sages. Look, wife, to Holy Bible, all warn of the perils of witchcraft. But, John... Why else have we indicted laws in this land to exterminate it? John, will you listen to no, me? No, you will listen to me. Now, what land is as humane as ours, as compassionate? We are a lawful nation, and all, high and low, have benefit of fair trial, judge and jury of their peers. I do not see law. I see frenzy. That's enough, Anne. This is not your affair. work to do. All those who are named by this bench as witches upon just causes shall be committed to the borough court for trial by jury. Mr. Snelling, will you proceed? Bring Judith Crabb. I've never known her but as Minty. She's called Minty as her mother was and her skill in herbs. Mr. Snelling. Mistress Lamb, if you please. If you please, mistress. I thank you. Did you last night strip and search the body of the accused? I did, Mr. Snelling. Did you find any of those marks which are left upon witches by their intercourse with the devil? I did, sir. What manner of marks were they? Numerous brown lumps in all parts, good sir. Warts! I'm a warty old girl. From the best authorities on this subject, we are told that the brown lump is where Satan has sucked. <gasps> Mistress Lamb, did you attempt to bring the accused, as is laid down, to repentance 
and confession by keeping her all night upon her feet. There was no need. She confessed at once, indeed. She boasted. She boasted that she was a witch? She boasted of possessing unearthly powers, good sir. I say... She yes. owns it, even now. I do not know what all this pother is about. My mother was a wise woman, what they do call a cunning woman, and so am I, by her teaching. I know charms and herbs and potions, all to do good. You claim to be a good witch, a white witch. Oh, aye, white as snow. Leastways, when Kate Dumfrey makes me wash myself. <laughs> Very good. Now, sir, the women, Burdock and Mags, step forward now. Elizabeth Burdock. Yes, sir. Six days since you met with the accused here at this castle. Yes, sir. What happened? I'd done no harm. She cursed me and threatened me with a flux of the bowel. I said she had a foul mouth, that's all. Was there any consequence? Sir, in truth, there were. Four nights after, it was Tuesday, I had such a looseness of the bowel all night long I was fit to die. Fit to die, I was, sir. She was, sir, fit to die. Tis pity she didn't. Why, she repeats the curse. Oh, Mags, did you witness the cursing too? Uh, yes, sir, Lizzie speaks the truth. Two witnesses, gentlemen, as required by the statute. Mr. Snelling rests upon the Act of 1604 against conjurations, enchantments and witchcraft. I have it here. The evidence is admitted, Mr. Snelling. Can you name any other unnatural practices of the accused? It is unnatural to make the unborn babe drop dead from the womb, sir. Oh. The aborting of the fetus is cited by Hopkins as one of the six worst artifices of the devil against mankind. Go on, Elizabeth. That mint is out many a wench get rid of her git. Oh. And she gives love powders for him to witch man with. You couldn't witch a man, not if you used gunpowder. <laughs> the accused betrays herself. Usher, that is all from these women. Let Emma Bowen come forward. Emma Bowen. You are... Four years in the service of Mistress Fletcher. Four years at Arnsgut, mm -hmm. sir, before that at Swinford. Preacher, is she an honest woman? Honest and godly, sir. Unfailing in her attendance for worship, we saw her kiss the book. We did, I thank you. Emma Bowen, do your duties bring you much into the company of Judith Crabbe? Well, only when I go down to the kitchen, sir. You speak as though you have not much eagerness to go down to the kitchen. I go when I have to, sir. Why? Only when you have to. I don't like the talk, sir. Why not? I wasn't brought up to hear such talk, sir. Can you tell me what it is that offends you? Oh, no. No, I cannot repeat it. But... But what, Emma? Well, I, I think nothing of seeing lewd and blasphemous things, sir. They? <laughs> Minty more than the others? Less? Emma, God is waiting for your answer. Well, sir... God is waiting, Emma! Well, I... I have heard her commend these charms she has for women who want to make their men more... More gamesome, shall we say? Yes, sir. And she has boasted of potions? Yes, sir. To stop the getting of bastards? Indeed, sir. Why, you've even heard the cook, Aunt Rachel... Heard what, Emma? Call her... an old... Which was in jest, you now! Silence! Or I'll put you out! Now, Emma Bowen, what else is there? Have you heard or seen anything else that frightened you or perhaps shocked you? There is something, isn't there, Emma? Well, sir, I was that frightened when Lizzie Burdock told of the curse. Why? Why? Six days before, I was in the kitchen, and... Yes, you must go on. I saw her make a puppet. Her? A puppet? A, a doll? 
Yes, sir, but mayhap she was only joking. What doll girl? Speak upon your salvation. She named it Lizzie Burdock, sir. She cast it in the fire and spat, saying, make Lizzie Burdock. It were a piece of dough. Silence! Silence! I meant to have no harm. But I had to tell the truth. And Gar has heard you, Emma. Retire now. Bring Rachel Pike. Emma, she means no harm. She's condemned, Minty. Rachel Pike, take this holy Bible, kiss it, and give it to me. Now, Rachel, you have kissed the holy Bible. You must tell the truth, or God will punish you. Answer me now. You are a wanton girl. Yes, sir. You have sinned with how many men? Oh! <laughs> I do not know, sir. <laughs> you must have been got with child on more than one occasion. Yes, sir. Have you any bastards? No, sir. How did you stop the births? Answer, girl. You have kissed the Holy Bible. You risk the lake of everlasting fire. Did this woman help you? She's helped others. I can get their names. Did she give you potions? Who am I to do? Answer him, love. I'm old. Save yourself. You hear? The witch condemns herself. Answer, girl. Testify. I will not hang her, sir. For all you din at me and bother me and bully me. How dare you speak to Mr. Selling thus? I will not be made to hang Minty. You. You men. You're worse than any of us. I can't say about you, Mr. Snelling, but as be your godly master, Mr. Rudd. Not one more word, Harlot. Crush her restrain her. He had me. He threw himself on me like a thief. You're mad at God. Emma, blaspheming bitch. This was not unexpected. I have heard of this girl. Famous. She tried to hold converse with the old woman down in the cellar, sir. And you heard her, sirs. Set up an outcry for the accused here in this hall. You cannot doubt that she participated in her witcheries and abortions. And what is more, sirs, she hath a familiar. A familiar? A familiar spirit, one that serves witches. It is written in Leviticus 7. It's better put in Leviticus 20, Mr. Snelling. A man, also or woman, that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. No! Shall stone them stones. Their blood shall be upon them. I thank you for your erudite correction, Mr. Lamb. There is a black dog. My oh, dog! Oh, little dog! dog. Blacky fair, let me win. Abraham no. Eagles, may stay where you are. Tell the bench what you know about this black dog. Well, this dog runs only to her, sirs. Runs away from all others. But I seen him in and out and up and down all about the village. Is it not said, sirs, the devil is everywhere? It is. I, I ask the bench to name her suspect of witchcraft. I suspect of witchcraft. I, as yet, suspect only. Uh, Mrs. Lamb, will you take her? She shall be searched. This dog had better be found and brought. Eagles, we shall soon recess. You will arrange a search party. Aye, sir. Mr. Snelling. I shall conclude the case against Judith Crabb. I contend that her admission that she is a white witch is proof enough of her guilt. Oh. Mr. Fletcher, you are cognizant of the statute upon this point. A white witch may be executed, for all employment of magical power is of the devil and incurs punishment of death. Thus, she is condemned. Yet, there is further evidence. She is a midwife. She has brought babes to birth. Others have died under her hands. Even the late Lady Lacey in the bearing of her youngest daughter... Sir, I will not have this. Good wife Margaret. I was present at Lucinda's birth when Lady Lacey died. 
It was God took me, lady, and in his mercy spared her child. This interruption is outrageous. Margaret, this is not proper. It's proper for you, Mr. Fletcher, a lawyer, to defend those who can pay. May not this old woman who's poor and bemused have a defender? Certainly not. It's unheard of. Let Snelling have his way, John. He's dangerous, even to us. There is such a thing as natural justice. Good wife Margaret Stratton may plead. Sirs, I go with Minty to child beds, and I tell you that this charge is false and wicked. It is but natural for many babes and mothers often to die at the time of birth. You all know that. And I tell you that her so-called potions are but simple herbs which God has planted for the good of us all. She deludes herself upon her powers because she is adult. She is but a silly old woman. Margaret, you shame me. And not fit to answer questions or to be tried. If any sickness or adversity come upon us, blame not the witch, but see the hand and correction of God. Dear heaven, if every wrinkled old woman was to be called a witch, look you all to the safety of your old parents and to your own old age. Mr. Fletcher, this is an attempt to prejudice the case. I'm not sure, Mr. Snelling. Here it is. As to the fearful, the superstitious, children or old silly persons, their testimony shall be treated with caution. It is a plea, Mr. Snelling. A doubtful plea, Mr. Fletcher. It refers only to certain kinds of testimony. It infers caution, Mr. Snelling. In the name of justice, we must think upon it. So do I wish, Mr. Fletcher. I ask for time to consider the point and to consult sundry works of authority. Agreed. I shall adjourn the session. Just one moment, sir. Mr. Snelling. The law also rules that a friend of witches, even of those upon examination as such, shall be held under strong suspicion of being a witch herself. When this court resumes, I wish to examine good wife Margaret Stratton. No! Good wife Stratton, you are to hold yourself in readiness. This session is adjourned. Not Margaret. Not Margaret, John. She will come off, I'm sure. Now, Snelling is a man of probity. He, he takes no reward, as others do. He, he's a lawyer of repute. His piety is no. Somewhat fiery in his zeal. But... He's a fanatic. I will take no more of him, and I will say so. But you must not. Now, Anne, you are not in this examination. Well, you are. You are conducting it and allowing all manner of unproven infamy to be taken as fact. But that is yet to be seen. I'm conducting this affair without fear or favor. Without fear? It seems to me that all fear this witch finder. And well, they might if they have aught to hide. Now, listen, woman. I will tell you plain. That man is dangerous, for he will pursue all suspicions to the end against no matter whom. I can tell you of people of standing who have been... Hanged. Say it. Be not fearful. I'm telling you not to arouse suspicion. It is not being fearful. It is plain prudence. Is this all you can say? You are in an office of state. You are high in this county, and you are master of this house. John, these poor, threatened women are in your care, even Margaret now. Protect them. If not, you are no master of Arnscott, and not the man I took for husband. I will do justice. Will you? I'm going to Snelling. I know what I must say without instruction from you. Rachel. Rachel, Dick. Have they found anything? Any marks on her? 
The preacher's woman is still searching her, and not gently. It will be bad if they find marks. Bad? Bad? Can you do naught but lament? Marks is a sign of the devil. No going against it. You. You as well. You'll see Rachel hanged. And Minty. And Margaret, too, it could be. Not if we can do. We can speak. You fool. Three taken, that's but a free bite. I heard at market at villages where they're taking folk away by the cartload. Would you have that upon us here? All testify against them. Why cannot someone testify for them? Now, that dog, now you know that dog. You know it's but a harmless stray. Yet it will hang Rachel when they bring it. They won't bring it. Well, thank God for that, at least. And you, Dick, for what you've done. But we must do more. I tell you, we cannot. Well, I can. And I shall. In court tomorrow morning. <laughs> you must know your master wife. You will bide here tomorrow morning for all our sex. My God, you will. And I shall lock you in. So, Snelling has accepted the plea. Your mint is but a silly old hag who fancies herself magical. He is conscientious. He thought upon the case law concerned uh, and agreed that it required Minty's acquittal. Case law, me britches, he thought upon you, a member of the Council of State. Well, who knows what a man is, Father? Anyway, Minty is free, and therefore good wife Margaret also is no longer in the case. Well, which is or not, I'm glad to see you free of trouble in your own house. Not quite. Rachel is still upon examination. I revert, gentlemen, to this woman's familiar, the black dog. Which of you folk have seen the black dog? Has his appearance been followed by misfortune, as Abraham Eagles tells us? Yes, sir. Not two witnesses, gentlemen, but ten times two. Uh, one moment, Mr. Snelling. I ordered yesterday that the dog be brought. Eagles? I had every man in the village searching, sir, and in the castle and in the woods and the edges, and not hair nor hide of the creature could we find. It's unfortunate. The evidence is not brought. It is well established, sir, that a familiar spirit may make himself invisible to all but the witch. That is true. Yes. I will continue, sir. Mistress Lamb. I must trouble you again. I rejoice to be called to do the Lord's work, sir. You made the search? Indeed, sir, and I found marks. <laughs> marks of the devil, without any doubt. <laughs> marks of his savage teeth and claws. <laughs> it was Mr. Rudd. It was Rudd. It was Rudd for me. Look! Come on, up, slut! Nay, hey, Mr. Lamb. We cannot be tender of our virtue when the girl's life is at stake. <laughs> now, are these, of a certainty, the devil's marks? <laughs> Well, they're not brown or lumpy, but red. Why, oh, made by man. Many men are beasts. Aye, maybe some in this room, though none would admit it. Mr. Fletcher, this woman was given right to plead for the old woman only. I concur, good wife Margaret, be silent. <laughs> As to the marks, sir, it is well established that a witch may have no more than a red spot, like a flea bite. A flea bite? What person in this hall has not a flea bite? Yes. I recall now. But in those cases, the witch feels no pain upon those spots. Amos. Sir. <laughs> These women have learned to simulate pain. Shall I cite case law, Mr. Fletcher? It is not necessary, Mr. Snelling. Continue to put your case. I rest my case, sir. The lewdness, the charms, the abortions, above all, the familiar, the marks. I ask for her committal. 
Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, we must now determine. She's guilty. Aye. It's plain. Aye, so it seems. But does it? Now, wait, gentlemen. We must see justice done. All the evidence is, is perhaps. Mr. Snelling, the dog may have vanished by diabolical means, or he may be a harmless mongrel roaming the countryside. Those marks may be of the devil or not. Sir. The accused may have pretended to feel pain, or she may have felt pain. I can see neither guilt nor innocence play. I say commit her. Father, you're the lawyer, son. I follow you. <laughs> Mr. Snelling, this bench is of the view that in such a cloud of doubt it can proceed no further with this case. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fletcher, where the bench cannot determine there is one who can, he who sees and determines all. It is laid down that where man cannot determine, the Lord God shall. I demand determination by ordeal. I demand that the accused be swum. No man may contest this submission. Rachel Pryke shall be put to the test of immersion in water. And may the Lord's will, and I pray his mercy, be thus made manifest. Trusteth in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out all that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. What be they going to do to a dick? Evil She'll thee. be thrown in. They imagined a mischievous device. If she come up, she's a witch in his hand. If she come not up, they leave her a while, saying she's in the hands of the Lord. Then they kindly pronounce her innocent and bring her up. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Amen. 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 Now. Let the trial be made. Throw! Throw! Is the silk weed binding her?
She is vindicated, Mr. Fletcher. She is dead, Mr. Snelling. Bring Rachel home. I can see that. I must get away from these walls. I must have some air. than heaving him up. <laughs> 